So hello, everybody. This is Daryl. Uh, I'm your teacher this month. Um, and this leaves live sessions are to sort of initiate you to what's going on each week to so give you uh, all the answers and to take you through it and uh, uh, get everybody together. And hopefully they're, they're, they're uh, a chance to be interactive and get to know everybody, to talk to everybody. Um, and uh, you need a certain amount of people to feel like it's a full classroom. So it uh, looks like we're going to have uh, at least a quorum or whatever would pass for one for, for today. So uh, welcome, guys, to Full Sail. Uh, this is the very first class you're taking. And uh, tonight, I just want to go through some things and get everything set up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of mystery to um, uh, online education. And we kind of want to just clear all that out. I want to make sure you guys understand what's going on. So we're going to show you how to get started. Talk about good practices. We'll go through the reading. Uh, there are two books assigned for this class, and uh, there's so many chapters per week that we're going to assign for the reading. I'll talk about that a little bit. And then there are two assignments each week. So I want to go through what you're doing this week, and then uh, next Monday we'll talk about all these stuff for week two. But uh, that's pretty much the way things uh, work out in these classes. They're four week classes, and every week, uh, the assignments open up on Monday morning, right after midnight on Sunday night, and uh, they're available throughout the entire week, and then they close Sunday night um, right at midnight. And so you have all week to get things done. And so it's a good idea to use Monday, not to try to race through and get a, a head start on everything, but just to, to see what's out there, to see what you have to do, and to be able to make a, a plan for what you're going to do for the week. So uh, to get started with, I just want to talk about this software. I don't want to spend too much time on the software because we are actually switching next month. So, you know, is this the first class you ever have? Uh, it's usually my job to get you used to using uh, Go to Training, but uh, we're going to use it this month. And then the school is switching over completely to a brand new system. Uh, it's a it's a system many of you may have, have used before called Zoom. So, if you're familiar with Zoom, we're going to be using Zoom from here on in. You know, after this month. This is our last month of our license with GoToTraining. GoToTraining is business software by Citrix. It, uh, it's made for uh, uh, business conferences, video conferences, and so forth. And it's been pretty robust in allowing us to run classrooms globally over the entire country, over the entire world. And it has a number of multimedia features that we can turn on and off. Uh, they all have webcams. Uh, we're not using the webcam tonight uh, just because it saves bandwidth, um, but uh, I wanted to run through some of the features of the software so we're able to take advantage of it uh, today. Uh, one of the things is that uh, you all have microphones with your computers or your, um, your phones, and that's how you're able to speak to me, but I have control over those microphones, and I have them turned off right now. And uh, when someone wants to ask a question or to have the floor, to, to make a statement or something in a classroom, you usually raise your hand. And so um, on the toolbar that comes with the software, uh, there's a little little hand with an icon with a green arrow pointing up and a red arrow pointing down. And that allows you to virtually raise your hand. I can see that. And when someone wants the floor, when they want to ask a question, uh, I can see that and I can call on them and unmute their mic. So let's try that right now. Somebody, uh, one of you, just uh, click on the hand and uh, request the floor, and I'll see uh, who's doing it. Uh, all right. So I see Austin Jacobson. So Austin, I'm unmuting you right now, and you have the floor. Say hi. Hello. Uh, you sound great. All right. So you're coming through fine. Uh, we have the ability to talk back and forth. Austin, what are you here to study? I'm in the game design program. Excellent. And where are you at right now? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. All right. So we're getting, you know, probably uh, lots of parts of the country um, uh, represented right now. And another way you can, can communicate if you don't want to use the microphone is there's a chat box down at the bottom. It's not all that fully figured, but uh, it, everybody goes down to the bottom right now to the chat box. And, and there's a, an input line. 
just type where you're at right now. Let's let's see where all the students are from around here right now. So uh, I see uh, James is from Maine. Uh, this starts scrolling really quickly. Uh, Jasmine's from Connecticut. Chris is from Los Angeles. So we got several West Coasters here. Um, Long Beach. Okay. So that may have been why um, uh, people were tuning in late, that the, a lot of people on the West Coast, because we're a little earlier in the day in the West Coast. Uh, so this, this is a session is taking place at 6 o'clock at night on the East Coast, where we are here in Winter Park, Florida. But obviously, it's 3 in the afternoon uh, for you guys on the West Coast, so uh, probably not as convenient to get to. Uh, we try to pick a time that, that works for all of the country, but uh, really we have people from all over the world uh, appearing. Uh, a couple months ago, I had a student who was uh, taking the class from Vietnam, and I could never quite figure out what his time uh, uh, time zone was, uh, uh, sort of the opposite of the day. Anyway, um, if, you're, if your microphone doesn't work or you don't have a microphone, uh, you can ask questions through chat or you can make comments through chat and so forth. Uh, so we have the ability to uh, communicate back and forth. And uh, for the most part, uh, I'm going to be lecturing. And instead of seeing me on the webcam, what you're seeing is my desktop. Right now, this is a, a slide. Uh, and we're going to have a few slides. And then eventually, I'll dump out of this. And, and you'll see my web browser, my basic uh, computer desktop. And I will be running the FSO system, and I'll go through the homework. I'll show you everything, and, and you can see everything live. So we found that listening to my voice and watching what I'm doing on the desktop is the easiest way for you guys to understand what's going on, what we're asking, what do we uh, uh, would, would uh, have for you to say, and so forth. So this software isn't perfect, and occasionally it will hang up. Uh, you can do a reset of the audio by toggling back and forth between the buttons, uh, between microphone and telephone. Uh, if, you, if you're connected by telephone, you have to have that turned on to work. But if you toggle them back and forth, it kind of acts like a computer res or a software reset. So if you stop hearing audio, you might try that. Uh, another way is to leave the software, just quit the software, go back to the link that you found, and rejoin the room and that does a reboot of the software as well as well now uh every so often we have some terrible weather here in florida and i can get bumped offline as well because i'm running i'm connected to the server the same way you guys are so the server is somewhere in la or california northern california i think um and we're all just connected to it so our connections uh, can be fragile and if we get locked off you just log back on. Now, if I, who's running the session, log off, I found that it takes me about two or three minutes to reboot my system and get back in the room. So if suddenly you stop hearing me or everything goes dead, hang on for two or three seconds, two or three minutes, and I may be back. And if I'm not back, then we'll have to cancel the session and uh, you know we'll do something else. But uh, we have found that this software works pretty well, but it it is susceptible. The internet uh, bandwidth is susceptible to weather. And we all know that the weather's going crazy some part of the country all the time. So even when the weather is nice in Florida, you know, there are forest fires in, in California or there are blizzards in northern uh, New York. So somewhere uh, we have trouble. Uh, William is saying you can't hear. How many of you can hear me or not hear me? Go to the chat box. Can you hear me? All right, Austin can hear. So um, someone type in the chat that William uh, should re should leave the room and, re and rejoin, and that might help uh, his audio come back together. So um, we don't want to spend too much time with this because you're going to have brand new software next month. Uh, but it, it has worked for us for several years, and uh, we're... Uh, finally uh, at the end of a contract. Um, but we have a feeling that, that Zoom is gonna work a lot uh, nicer. And that experience is waiting you next month as well. 
So who am I? Well, I'm Daryl. I'm your instructor this month. We have several sections of creative presentation going on simultaneously. There's an online, uh, there's a campus class for people who are joined at the campus. And there are several sections of online because we have always more online students than students at the campus. And um, different teachers are teaching different sections. I've been teaching creative uh, presentation for about three or four years. And um, before that, I was teaching video. And uh, you can see I'm, I'm an old guy, I'm an actual gray beard. And um, the thing to know about me is I'm not hip anymore. Uh, you know, uh, my taste in music runs to uh, the Rolling Stones and Roxy Music and then Talking Heads and 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, but um, I do know computers and I know how to uh, uh, work with all the stuff that we're dealing with this month. So you'll find that I have a ready answer for most of the problems you're going to have. And I love answering questions. I love being available. To that end, I'm giving you my cell phone number. So I have an official number at school and you can call that during office hours, but I recommend that you not. I recommend that you just call. If you wanna to talk to me, you can call my cell phone number. I'm happy to talk, but mostly I'm giving you a cell phone number here so you can text me. I know that when people want answers very quickly, um, uh, you, you want as quick a response as possible. And I'm gonna have my phone with me at all times. And it's really easy to text someone back and answer. So if you want an immediate answer, send me your question in text. Now you can also send me your question via email and I will respond to that. You can send me questions on the FSO platform and we'll, we'll talk about that. And that is uh, also a really good way to talk, but it's not going to be sort of real time. If you, if you ask me a question on uh, the FSO platform, it may be 20 or 30 minutes or even an hour before I see it and respond back to you. So if you want an answer immediately, do the texting. Uh, if it's not that important, then uh, sending me a message on FSO is much better because it's in context. It's right on the page where you're talking about the lesson. And uh, I have much greater range of, of uh, supplying you with um, uh, different kinds of uh, media for answers and so forth. So um, I've been at Full Sail for a while. Uh, I have a bio that you can look up and, and whatnot, but I'm, I'm really not all that interesting. But the, the thing is, I, I love teaching and I love helping students. So I'm just here to give you answers to things. Now, I'm not here to lead you exactly through the course. The way we work at Full Sail is we like a, a method of training that we call problem-based learning, which is we're gonna give you a general assignment and you may feel that it's vague because we leave a lot of options in there, a lot of freedom for you to figure out what you want to do, a blank canvas, so to speak. And you have to be creative. You have to be thinking for yourself. And it's not that easy, but it's much more challenging. It's much more fun. So my task is to keep you going if you ever run into any problems, especially if you run into any technical problems. Uh, in the first three or four months here, we haven't given you the laptop yet. I know you're all anxiously waiting for that launch box with all the great software on it. And you will get that before you start entering into your um, specific study of what you came here to get your degree in. But in the first three months, three or four months here at Full Sail, you're doing more or less general education. So creative presentation is a multimedia class, but everyone takes it. So uh, it's not designed for filmmakers. It's not designed for audio guys. It's not designed for computer programmers. It's designed for everybody. So while there will be using, we will be using audio and we can do video and whatnot, we're doing basic multimedia skills. Nothing that you wouldn't be doing yourself in, on Instagram or Twitter or, or some other platform. So, um, I know that uh, you're gonna have to make do with whatever you have. So the, uh, that older laptop you have or that phone that you're using, I'm gonna help you figure out how to do whatever uh, media requests we have of you on that. And um, if you're at a loss for how to get something done, get a hold of me, I'll have an answer for you. So now I wanna find out who you are now that you guys have, sh have shown up. Uh, and so this is the first 
little uh, chance to uh, talk to each other. I'm going to go down the list here uh, on uh, of who's signed in, and I'm going to give everybody 15 seconds. I'm going to ask you four questions. Now, this is not a pop quiz. This is not a gotcha here. I'm going to show you what the four questions are. I want everybody to tell me what is your name, where are you from, what are you studying here, because you're all studying something differently. You're all taking different uh, degree programs right now. You're mixed in together. And finally, give me two words that describe your professional vision. So if your microphone isn't working, you can type your answers into the chat box. If you're shy and you don't want to talk, you can pass. I will allow you that. But I want everyone to participate. So uh, the first one up is Ashley Estelle. And if I messed up your name, let me know. Ashley, are you there? Oh, she's on her lunch break. Well, I guess she can't talk. She's from Yakima, Washington. And what are you studying? Studying visual cinematography. Okay, excellent. So uh, next, we'll come back to Austin. We've already done Austin, but it, here's us this chance to do it uh, straight through. Hey, Austin. Uh, already did it, but uh, I'm Austin Jacobson from Vegas in game design. Um, two words, I guess, would be uh, fun and joy. Excellent. Thing. You nailed it. Way to go. Uh, all right. Chris Barboza. Hello. Hi. All right. Hi. Uh, my name is Chris Barboza. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm studying sports casting and creative vision. Uh, probably be creativity and originality. Excellent. Good choices. Uh, Christopher Harris. Christopher writes in the uh, chat box. He's from South Carolina. He's studying game art and design. Okay. And James Johnson. James, are you there? Okay, uh, James is answering in chat. He's in. He's from Belfast, Maine. And what are you studying? Digital film. All right. Thank you. Uh, next one up is Jasmine Gotch. And if I messed that name up, I'm sorry. Jasmine, are you there? Jasmine says her mic is not working. So you can use the chat box as well. Where are you from, Jasmine? From Connecticut, and she's studying digital cinematography. Okay, thank you. Jay Madrid. Jay, are you there? Hey, everybody. Hey. I'm Jay. I am from Los Angeles originally. I am studying digital cinematography, and um, two words could be innovative and driven. Innovative and driven. Excellent. Well, we have a lot of people studying cinematography. You never can tell month to month it changes. Uh, a lot of times I've had a lot of game designers, but uh, lately I've been going a lot of sportscasters. This month it seems to be cinematographers. Um, Roseris Suoso Laboy, and I'm sure I muted that, mangled that name, so tell me how bad I was.
Roseris, are you there? Hello? Hi. Oh, I was like having a whole conversation by myself at this point. I didn't know. Um, you can have it with us now. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, you definitely butchered it. It was, but it's okay. Um, it's really hard for people to get that. Um, it's prosites and everybody calls me Rosa and um, I'm actually from Orlando, Florida. Um, but I decided to do online because I do work and, go, um, you know, I have a family. So, Excellent. you know, it was a lot more flexible for me. And I am studying media communications and two words that describe um, it would be inspiration and revelation. Excellent. Uh, great choices. Thank you. Uh, Timothy Robinson. How you doing? Hey, the can of mango. Uh, that too badly. Uh, good, good. My name is uh, Timothy Robinson. I'm from East Orange, New Jersey. Uh, I'm studying music production. And two words that describe my professional vision are productive and inspirational. Excellent. Great choices. All right. And our final contestant is William Brandenberger. William, are you there? Yeah, I'm in uh, Atlanta, New York, studying audio production. And two things that would describe me is um, basically I have 15 years of military experience. So. Excellent. Well, it looks like we have a, a really uh, nice, interesting, very group of people here we, this month. Um, and uh, I'll be expecting uh, really creative things from you when we get into making our presentations and talking about uh, what we're doing in the class. So what am I expecting from you guys? Well, this is month one, and you guys are all coming from all different walks of life. You're here to study different things. You have, uh, you've had different educational experiences. Some of you are coming back to school from a long time. Some of you are coming out of the military. We know that this is a really uneven platform. So it's not fair for us to expect uh, any um, uh, advanced skills in any particular program. But we know that a lot of you do have that. And so we want you to work to the level of your technical prowess. We, no one's going to be held responsible for any technical uh, issues that goes on with their, uh, their classwork. What we're looking for in the assignments we give you is your ideas and uh, your ability to, to think and be creative. And to the extent that you can uh, um, work the, the multimedia, um, we want you to make it as lively as you can. We want to give you a wide range of choices. So those of you that have very little experience in creating media, we're going to show you some tools that you can get to using very quickly and you can do great things with. Uh, and those of you that have already, you know, have uh, plenty of experience in audio production or or uh, we've got some cinematographers here, maybe you guys already know Premiere and Final Cut Pro, you'll be able to use those tools as well, as long as you already know them. I don't want anyone taking on an advanced production tool that they don't know. Uh, you're setting yourself up for failure this month because it's not about learning those tools. It's about using the tools to get your ideas out. So what do we expect from you guys? We expect you to stay in touch with us. We expect to us. Um, we expect you to uh, ask us questions. Uh, being an online student is very hard because we don't know what's going on with you unless you let us know. So please ask questions. Please let us know what's going on. Uh, it's it's very tough to get started as an online student. Uh, we know from experience that it takes eight weeks to build up any kind of habit of anything you want to do. It's, it's not about school study or anything. Any habit you ever want to take up, uh, smoking or uh, popping your fingernails or, or whatever, any habit takes at least eight weeks of practice to become a routine. And that means that you're going to go through two classes here at Full Sail before you can pretty much get your study habits down the way you want them. I want you to get a start on protecting some time in your week for your studies. 
but know that life is going to interfere. Some of you have kids, some of you work jobs, some of you work double jobs. Um, some of you are going to uh, have medical issues come up out of the blue. You never know what life is going to throw at you. So you're going to do the best you can at creating a schedule. And then when it goes wrong, let us know so we can provide, uh, can help you out. The school is very focused on uh, accountability and deadlines. And so uh, as you get into your later classes, there will be uh, a lot expected of you. In this first month, we're going to be practicing a lot of forgiveness. We are trying to get people started on a schedule. And there's no point in us being martial about it. Uh, we know that life is going to hit you and, and, and knock you off the, the, the seat. And then you just have to get up and try it again. So if you stay in touch with us, if you let us know what's happening, if, if something causes you to miss the deadline, let us know ahead of time. Then we'll extend your deadline and we can, we can practice forgiveness. Uh, telling us what happened after the fact too often sounds like an excuse. But telling us that you know that you're going to miss the deadline because you're dealing with these other issues that are a priority, uh, that makes you proactive and that's what we're looking forward. Stay in touch. Let us know what's going on. And for uh, if you're having trouble accessing any part of the uh, the system, if you're having trouble submitting homework, if you're having trouble using software, let us know. It's our job to, to work you through that. So what should students expect from, from us, from me? Well, you should expect me to be available. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not avoiding your calls. I'm waiting for your calls. I'm I like to answer questions. So you're never bothering me. If you want uh, to, to talk to me about anything, you'll find that uh, I'm eager and available. Um, and I know that you need quick feedback. All of our assignments are built on top of each other. What we learn in week one will provide a base for what you do in week two. And that'll provide the, the, the next step to week three. So when you complete an assignment at the end of a week, it's important for you to know how you did. It's important for you to have quick feedback in order for you to be able to go forward. Uh, the, the accelerated uh, education here at Full Sail doesn't work unless we can do that. So that means it's on me. It's my job to get grading turned around very quickly. Now, the Full Sail standard is any assignment turned in by Sunday night has to be graded by the following Friday. The creative presentation department standard is anything turned in by Sunday night has to be graded by Wednesday. But my personal standard is I'm going to try to get it back to you on Monday. I'm going to do everything I can to turn around the homework quick so that you know how you're doing and you don't have to be uh, worried about how you did last week as you move forward into the new issues each week. So uh, you have a right to expect that from me. I'm your teacher, you're paying my salary. I'm here to service you. So never feel like you're bothering me. Ask me anything you want and um, uh, I'll give you an honest answer. Uh, professionalism. Now this is something that you guys probably clicked through earlier in the day as you're going through a lot of that preamble material that was before the week one section. Uh, a lot of movies telling you about you know, this is uh, uh, this is the semester, this is the class, et cetera, et cetera. And professionalism uh, linked you to a school manual, but it didn't really didn't talk about much else. But professionalism is something that's very important at Full Sail. It's our job not just to give you skills and a diploma and say, lots of luck. It's our job to turn you into working creative professionals and, uh, to get you a job working in the industry that you, you've chosen to become part of. And as part of that, we not only have to give you the technical skills, but we have to give you the work skills. And so turning you into a working professional uh, is something that we tend to, to, to work on through the entire length of your education here. And it just starts by treating you as if you were a working professional and having you treat everyone else if they were equal cohorts, that we are gonna act professionally towards each other. 
And the way this professionalism grade works, it's it's a part of every single class you have at Full Sail, is that um, you come into that month with 100%. And if you act professionally throughout, if there are no demerits, if there's nothing that you need to be called to account for or penalized for, then you will end up that month with the full 100%. But if you miss a deadline, if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, if you act uh, rudely or are out of bounds towards other classmates in the discussions or otherwise, we're going to notice that behavior and we're going to uh, apply it towards uh, professionalism grade. Now, usually in month one, there's never really an issue. Students are so eager to get here and, and so so nice to each other that it never becomes an issue. But somewhere down the road, you know, after people have been at school for a long time, uh, sometimes they're, they have a tendency to have a mean side show up and professionalism helps keep you on track. It turns you into a working professional. It makes you someone who's uh, eager to work, pleasant to work around, something that other people can depend on, the kind of people that uh, companies want to hire. And that's the whole point of a professionalism uh, as it's built into each class here at Full Sail. And I don't need to say more about it, except that we're going to treat you as a professional artist and we're going to give you that respect. We expect you to give all the other classmates that respect. And if you fall in that degree, we'll let you know. Um, this month's course is built around two books. And so it's very important that you're able to get to the reading. And to that regard, anybody who can't access the books, if you've tried to access the books today and can't get to them, let me know immediately or let tech support know. If you haven't tried yet uh, after this lecture, please go to the 1.2 section and at least try to link through to the books. Um, we are served these uh books by a third party service. I'm going to dump out of the uh the the slides just a second and go to the actual platform. So uh here is um the the the, the course and 1.2 is the reading activities. And uh you can see that we have assigned you five chapters in the book called Resonate. So there are links to, to each specific chapter. There are links to the book itself. So if you are able to click on those links and see that book, then that means that you've been taken from the Full Sail website to another website. That website is O'Reilly Books. And your school email name and password have, are your credentials that get you in there. So we don't want you to ever go to O'Reilly Books directly. If you go to O'Reilly Books from Google or Yahoo or something, uh, and try to get in, uh, they're going to sign you up and ask for your credit card. We don't want you to do any of that. If you're coming in through the links that we provide, then the the system will try to check your credentials. And if everything is working as it should, it will let you in. And you can read these books online on the website. Now, that means that you need to have a permanent multimedia connection. Uh, and that doesn't work so well sometimes for you guys that are on your phone. And uh, there actually is a mobile app for O'Reilly. And it is actually uh, possible to download books and read them offline on the O'Reilly app. Unfortunately, the two books for our class aren't included in that. So you actually do have to read these books uh, via a persistent connection to the website. Now you can also connect to the website um, via a uh, uh, your phone or your computer. If you're if you're connecting via uh, the computer, you get this sort of richer um, multimedia experience. You get uh, artwork and graphics and, and and so forth. And there are aids to reading. There are highlight lists and search tools and whatnot. Uh, it's a it's a it's a decent experience, but um, it requires the computer to be optimal. And so, if you're reading this on the phone, uh, there are a couple of, of of ways that we can mitigate that. There is actually a text only version of the O'Reilly website, 
that loads much faster and looks better in your phone. So if you're wanting to just get the reading done, that's one way of getting it done. Uh, but unfortunately, if you're if you're uh, the kind of person that wants to do everything through an app, the O'Reilly app is not going to work for us this month. You need to actually access uh, the the two books that we're looking at through uh, the website, the O'Reilly website. And the links you'll always find on the, uh, the FSO portal. So that should set you up there. Uh, and again, if your links are not, if your credentials are not taking you to the website, if it's asking you to sign in or something, uh, contact me or tech support and we will help fix that because you need to be able to access these books. So what are these books? Um, the two books that we're reading are written by the same author. The books are Resonate and Slideology, and they're written by Nancy Duarte. Nancy Duarte is an, uh, an art director who is working professionally. She a, a, was a freelance person. She would go in and, and uh, ha take different business meetings. She would pitch to clients. She would be pitched by other people uh, in, in the course of her professional career. And pretty much, you know the way business works. Every time there's a business meeting, people haul out PowerPoint and they just run the meeting through PowerPoint. It's something that people have started, have, 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 have been doing uh, kind of on automatic. I don't know how it got started, but it, it, it just can't stop. And what Nancy Duarte noticed is that even though she was always going to meetings with creative professionals and every other person in the room was an art director or an artist and really creative, that every single PowerPoint she was seeing was just dog ugly and boring. It was just full of text and bullet points and the, the uh, cartoon clip art. Uh, people feel like they have to run PowerPoint, but they don't put any effort into it. They just do the least and they do the worst. And she couldn't figure it out why that was. And so she wrote her first book, Slideology, as a sort of graphic design aid to how do you make good, interesting slides. And so Slideology is a really good book that talks mainly about what are the best kinds of visuals you can make for slides and, and what are the portions and how do you set them up and so forth. And the book was a huge hit. She realized that there was a huge thirst out there for people to have more interesting presentations. Well, what she also realized was that she'd written the wrong book. It wasn't the wrong book, but she, she, she talked about the end of the process, making slides, and that she hadn't addressed all the other things that you have to go through to make a presentation. And so she wrote uh, Resonate. As, as the second book, but it's really the first book that you need to read because it's the book that says, what is a creative presentation? What is the process you need to go through? You know, uh, what do you need to do first? How do, you, uh, how do you get this put together? She answers all of these basic questions. And um, we're going to talk about PowerPoint an awful lot through this month. Sometimes we'll talk about PowerPoint meaning presentations. They are not equal. You know, just the same way as saying tissue paper is not the same as saying Kleenex. But um, sometimes you just can't get around it. You know, our, our mouths are already fully formed to, to think that PowerPoint means presentation. And the PowerPoint software from Microsoft is very powerful. It's very good. It's excellent software. Uh, so why are the PowerPoints that people make so awful? Well, uh, there's an easy answer for that, and uh, Microsoft can't tell you, but I can tell you, and Nancy Duarte can tell you, and that is that the only thing that PowerPoint is for is making slides, and the slides are the last thing you should do when you're making a presentation. Most people, if they, they think that, that PowerPoint is a presentation-making software, and if you get an assign, if you get assigned to make a presentation, the first thing you're going to go do is open PowerPoint. Now, what happens when you do that? Uh, there's a menu that comes up and it asks you to choose a, a template. So you're picking some backgrounds and some colors and some fonts. And you know, once you make that choice, it opens up into a big blank slide that says "Feed me," 
And all of a sudden, you're having to decide what these slides are. And you haven't yet said, what is my presentation? You should not be opening up PowerPoint until you already have your voiceover and your, your complete narrative done for your presentation. So um, open PowerPoint last. This is the problem that most people have. This is what makes for bad PowerPoints. People start in PowerPoint and think that you can create this by making slides. The slides are the last thing you should do. Uh, and you should have all the other answers to what your presentation is going to be finished before you ever start making the slides. If you follow that process, and that's the process we're going to put you through this month, we're going to make everyone do this kind of, of presentation. Everyone in this class is going to make a creative presentation, and you're going to use your voice. We're going to use voiceover. That's another thing. Uh, oftentimes, people will write a script, and that script will be the text in the slides of PowerPoint. So then they open up the PowerPoint and then read it to everyone as if the people can't read it off the screen themselves. That makes for a terrible experience. The slides should not be the text of your speech. The text of your speech is something that you need to be able to say in a um, engaging, connecting way. And all of us are going to uh, practice in recording our voiceover audio this month. Don't anybody think that you're going to get away from, without doing it. You're going to create a voiceover audio. It's required. That's the main point of this class. We're going to learn how to talk to people and tell them interesting stories instead of just reciting off boring information. And we're going to use our voice to connect with other people. Now, if you were taking the uh, uh, the creative presentation class on campus, you would, at the end of the month, have to stand up in front of the class and deliver your presentation in person. That's much more pressure. You'd have to do it live. You'd have to rehearse it. You'd have to think about your 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 appearance. You know, you'd have to worry about your body language and what you're wearing and your eye contact and dealing with the crowd. Doing an online presentation is a much simpler lower stress thing, uh, but you are going to have to say on to audio what you want to tell your audience. You're going to have to record it, and then we're going to add slides to it. And uh, that's what we're going to work on this month, and we'll work out all of those component points. But know that uh, if you have to do it, if you do it in the right order, if you figure out who you're talking to and figure out what you want to say, and then write out what you want to say, and then rehearse it, and record it, get a good recording, and don't start making slides until you have your voiceover, then you're going to make a good presentation. So that's part of what we're going to learn in these slides this month, or this week. The first five chapters that we're reading, Nancy Duarte is going to tell us the do's and don'ts of making a good presentation. She's going to tell you uh, how you should act, what you should say, how you should relate to, to your audience, and so forth. And uh, you may be asking at this point, why is it important that you even learn this? Why, you know, why is this, this you, why are you taking this class? This is the very first class that you come into full sale for. Well, presentations have taken over the business world as the way we get things done. 50 years ago, if there, if there was a problem in an office, some vice president would be called in to appoint a panel and they'd study it for six months and they'd write a white paper that was 50 pages long and it would get filed somewhere because business moves that slowly. But business moves so fast now that if we want a decision, you know, uh, it's Thursday and we want to have a meeting on Tuesday morning and, and, and have an answer that we need to make a uh, media and presentations that happen fast. And one of the aspects you're gonna learn about a good presentation is that it's short. We don't pad these. A short a presentation cuts to the heart of things. It isn't padded with extra information and it is a clarifying experience. So in the modern art world, in video game making, uh, cinematography, uh, you know, film production, audio production, 
uh, creative design, marketing. When we have to make a decision, we make that decision in a hurry. And we usually run these meetings. The meetings never last more than an hour. There's usually more, never more than six or seven people in a conference room sitting around. The person who called the meeting or the person who's leading the meeting starts with a short presentation. And we mean short. They should be, you know, three minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, nothing very long, because you want to spend most of that hour talking about the choices and making a decision. So the whole point of a presentation at the beginning of a business meeting is to clarify what are the issues, what are we talking about, what are the parameters that we have to discuss. And if the presentation isn't cutting to the heart like that, then it isn't doing its job. So the industry has decided that this is the way we communicate with each other. And this is a skill that all of you are going to need. Wherever you are, wherever you fit in the communi creative communication industry, you're going to be able to need to do this, whether it's making a uh, uh, Kickstarter video for a new project you, idea you have, or letting people figure out, you know, what are the issues for the album design for the for for the new record that you're about to drop. You're going to be able, you're going to have to be able to communicate to other creative professionals, and the way that you communicate to them, the way you get to them, is through multimedia because we're living in a multimedia society right now. So uh, we want you to have the skill, and this isn't going to be the only presentation you make here at Full Sail. It's just the very first one. This, you're probably going to end up making presentation for every single class you have. It'll all just be based on different issues and programs. So why is it that some presentations just leave us hanging out there? Why are they so boring? Why do you feel like you don't know why you're there? Well, because the person who's leading that presentation is listing off a series of facts, but they haven't decided to take all of the the information that they need to impart to you and put it into a story. Presentations are boring because they're usually just disparate items listed out. It's like someone reading the phone book to you. But uh, facts alone don't make an engaging presentation. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentation. So we're going to learn storytelling. We're going to learn that whatever it is that we have to say, whatever the information that we have to put in the presentation, if we can put it into a story form that makes sense, that coheres, then uh, people are going to remember it. People are going to have a much easier time swallowing that information. Good story is the basis of all powerful presentations. And uh, storytelling is just simply more effective than reporting. If, if you tell someone dis, uh, isolated facts, they may, or they may or may not remember one or two of them, but they won't remember them all. If you tell someone a story, they're very likely to remember the entire story. And uh, storytelling is just something that our society has, has had bred into us from caveman times, going back 70, 100,000 years. Our, little, our literal survival as a species depended upon it. In the old days, if there was information people needed to have, you couldn't run a, power, a boring PowerPoint and have people zone out. They needed to know. If you were telling people vital information about something that would uh, impact their lives, you had to tell it to them in an interesting, powerful way. So storytellers gathered around the the campfire, and instead of listing facts, they told a story with drama and media, and people remembered it. Uh, and your brain is actually wired for this. We've studied that if you just give people isolated facts, that information gets stored in a couple of places, but if you try to get them to recall it, they don't necessarily connect. But if you tell them a story with multimedia, those same facts will now get embedded with each other because they the, that that multimedia sensory sensation will connect.
those facts together for people. So what do you need to tell a story? Well, it's very simple, really. If you learn the art of what you have to do, uh, a story consists of a beginning, middle, and end. In the beginning, you're setting up the situation. You're, you're laying out the, the lay of the land. In the middle, you're introducing complications. If there's a choice to be made, if we have to buy uh, new pencils or, or new computers, talk about the pros and cons or, or what you have. Uh, if, if, if there's a creative choice to be made, what are the options? The middle is where the changes that can be made but haven't necessarily been uh, locked in stone are up for debate. And the end is where you're trying to lead the audience. So you may, in laying out four or five possibilities, um, knock all but one of them out of the way, and in the end say, this is the one we have to choose. Or you may actually say, all three of these have possibilities. We now have to make the hard decision. Do we go with A, which has these advantages and this a disadvantage, or B or C? And at some point, um, we're going to make a choice. But the, the, the storytelling is about laying out the issues and making and clarifying for your audience what is the information that needs to be figured out and what decision needs to be arrived at. And in terms of uh, using slides or presentation media to help that, the slides are there to help people understand what you have to say. Uh, once you've figured out the story that you want to tell, you then want to take every advantage you can. You want to tell that story in engaging language, and uh, you want to then record it so your voice is on a, 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 um, a pre-made um, online presentation. But once you have that narrative locked into audio, that's the point at which you start thinking about the slides. And the slides have the advantage of they're not telling the entire story, they're helping support the story. So whatever is being said in audio, the slides are there to help people understand that. They're to add understanding. Sometimes they will carry the full weight of communication, but for the most part, the slides are there to enhance the meaning and maybe sometimes make it much more specific. And to that end, uh, the, the type of slide that Nancy Duarte is promoting, that we use, that we create, uh, combines a quote and an image. You can have something that's just all text. You can have something that's just all image. They all have their own um, uh, properties that, that work for them. But when you combine a quote with an image, what you're doing is getting even more specific. Let me show you an example. Here's an, here's an interesting quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. It's a quote from Socrates. So Socrates lived in ancient Greece 3,000 years ago. This is, a, this is a, a, a quote that's been known in a long time. And I'm laying it out here as blank as possible. It's black text against a white background. You do not have any way of interpreting this quote other than the information I'm giving you. So there are a couple of ways you could think about this quote. You could think about it as, you know, education through the ages or education, you know, as it's happening now or as a, a daily experience. You know, um, all of that interpretation is available to you because the quote itself doesn't specify. And I'm not helping. I mean, the only thing I've other information I've given you is by listing the author, you know, that it's an old quote that's been around forever. So. You may think that this is just about, you know, oh, this is what people used to say about education. But if you really want people to think about it as, as a, a, a current moment, a moment of urgency, you might think about combining this quote with an image of third world kids under an underpass teaching themselves. And now suddenly there's a sort of current events, modern urgency sense to that quote. I have colored that quote for you by combining this image with this quote. And that's a creative act. That's the creative act that you guys are going to be engaged in. And it's an awful lot of fun. 
It's a lot of fun to think about, but how can I make people understand the quote in exactly the terms that I want you to think about them? And so uh, the image that you put it with changes the way you might think about it. This, this image speaks to current events. Now, like I said, this is a 3,000 year old quote. Maybe I did want a lofty sense. If I take a Renaissance painting of Socrates and combine it, suddenly I am meaning that other meaning, that education through the ages is, is something that happens over and over again. And we're, we're basically talking about, you know, uh, the motto, the essence of education, uh, because this older Renaissance painting is speaking to timelessness. It's giving information coloration to the quote. Now, I think most of you don't know much about Socrates. I think you're a modern audience that cares about modern pop media. And part of my job as someone who's connecting with you guys is to uh, um, know who you are and how to reach you. So what kind of modern pop reference would any of you have to Socrates? Well, one thing that occurs to me is the uh, a Keanu Reeves movie from the 90s called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which had the character Socrates in it. So if I take a movie clip from that and combine it, suddenly I'm making a cultural reference to my audience. I'm saying I know who my audience is. My audience is not 60-year-old uh, education professionals. My audience is people in pop culture. And this is how I'm speaking and connecting with my audience. It's almost like an in-joke. Uh, you, you can't do this unless you know who your audience is. And this is a tricky thing for me because maybe this is over your heads. If you guys are all 19, then maybe you, you haven't seen this movie. This is a movie from the 90s. However, Netflix is about. Keanu Reeves is still popular. You know, he's in the John Wick movies. So maybe you do know what Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is about. It's uh, my job to know enough about the audience to know whether or not the references I'm making, the cultural references, the in-jokes, the, the, the art that I'm choosing resonates with my audience. So uh, I have to know if you're the right audience for this uh, sort of in-joke. And if you are, then I've scored big. If I'm wrong, then, you know, crickets. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 I took a shot and I failed. But each time you do that, you're coloring how people think about the information that you're giving them. And for every slide, for every bit of text that you put out there, you have the ability to combine it with an image that will then have that same effect for the audience. So this is all about storytelling. You guys have probably heard, you know, the general theories of, of storytelling from uh, Joseph Campbell and so forth, that storytelling is the journey of the hero, that whatever adventure someone's going on, uh, the hero goes out and makes these choices. And that's what we're talking about with the beginning, middle, and end. The hero is unsettled. The hero ventures forth. He meets different challenges. He meets different uh, uh, situations. And he comes through to a conclusion. And so you would think that in telling a story that you as the storyteller are that hero, that you're talking about yourself or you're talking your way through. But uh, really the way you have to think about it is that if you want to captivate your audience, you have to recognize that the audience is the hero, that the, you are spinning a tale. And the audience, if they buy your tale, they're running it like a little movie in the back of their heads. They're imagining this is happening to me. And if they go on the journey, if they think of themselves as the hero, if they go through those changes, if they imagine encountering this situation or making those choices, then they are the hero going through that journey. So you, as the person speaking, as the uh, presenter in your creative presentation, you're not the hero. But you are someone that figures into these um, Joseph Campbell landscape. Uh, 
in in that theory, the person who initiates the hero on his journey is called the mentor. It's the older, wiser guy that sends you forward. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi sending Luke Skywalker off on his adventure. And so you are the mentor for these audiences. And as you tell your story, you're meant to tell this story in a way that engages them to go further, to dig more into the information, to imagine themselves encountering all the things that you're saying. And that, in, and that affects the language that you use. It affects the way you talk to them. It affects the way you use your voice. You as the mentor have to guide the audience through the story that you want to be playing in the back of their heads. And as the mentor, you have to know who they are. You have to understand what they are looking for. You have to know what motivates them. You have to know what they respond to. So this is a, a, a job of research. You can't just deliver a presentation to uh, a group of people you've never met because you don't know what they will respond to. You need to do enough research to know uh, what artwork they like or what, what cultural references they like or uh, what media they prefer, or you know what jokes they uh, like, et cetera. Um, it's your job as the person who's creating the presentation to know enough about the audience to know how can you make connections that will engage and empower the audience. And that's the job of the mentor. That's what doing a creative presentation is all about. And it's a really uh, fun creative act and it's something that happens completely before you start to make the presentation. We have an open PowerPoint at all. We haven't started any of this. We have to figure these things out in a, a planning sort of way uh, before we get started on making the actual presentation. So um, this week, we're going to look at a lot of presentations and we're going to see what people do right and what people do wrong and 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 learn what works and and so forth and get an idea of just the astounding range because when we say powerpoint or presentations are more than powerpoints you know they're movies you know everything that you see on uh youtube is a presentation essentially so um we're going to define presentation very broadly we're not going to we're not going to confine it to something that that, that is birthed out of the PowerPoint software. And so in doing that, we have to, you know, widen our field to what is a presentation, what isn't. And we'll think about that this week. And then next week, we're going to learn how to plan a presentation because we're going to, we're going to create a presentation this month. We're going to learn about different presentations this week. We're going to start our, our, our project next week. And we're going to plan it out. We're not going to make the media. We're going to do all of the advanced thinking, the scripting, the, the, the brainstorming. And in week three, we're going to create that presentation. You're going to make an entire presentation with a voiceover audio and slides, everything running, looking great. You're going to turn it in. And then you're going to get feedback on that. And in week four, you're going to have a chance to make it even better. You're going to get critiqued, and you'll have a chance to make a version 2.0 of the same program. So that's the creative process. And we're going to go through that the entire month. So this is the this month or this week. Uh, I want you to really engage in the reading. That's going to set you up. And uh, the main project that we're going to work on is uh, looking at a lot of presentations. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So it's all about creating this journey that you take your audience on. You are a storyteller. That's what I want you to think of yourself as. No matter what it is you're saying in your presentation, you're going to turn what you have to say into the form of a story so that people will listen raptly to you. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is the discussion. The two activities we're doing this week for a grade is you're posting in the discussion board and you're going to do uh, uh, an analysis of several uh, videos that we watch. Uh, and I'm going to talk about both of those assignments right now. Uh, before I jump into the discussion board, 
Do I have any questions from anybody? I know I talked a long time. I haven't given you guys a chance to respond. Does anybody have any questions for me? Did I lose anybody anywhere? Uh, are you guys with me? Is everyone, uh, has anybody tried to get into TED Talk or um, um, O'Reilly books and not been able to? No one's had any issues with that? Okay, excellent. So uh, the first activity you're gonna be dealing with this week is the discussion board. And this is a written discussion board. And what we want to know is, what is your personal history with having created presentations? Did you do them in high school? Did you do them in the army? Uh, did you do them in, in, in a job or on sales? And we wanted to find this as widely as possible. Maybe you did something at church. Uh, there are lots of places where you have the chance to tell people a story or to, to try to persuade someone of a point of view. Uh, we are in a political um, uh, season, and there are people going door to door trying to convince people about their favorite political candidate. Every single one of those door to door conversations is a presentation, it is a story in which you're trying to persuade someone. Uh, most of them probably uh, end very abruptly with someone shutting the door on you, but if they'll listen to you, you can tell them that story. So uh, what are your guys' experiences with presentation? That's what we're asking here. And so when we come into the discussion, when we come into the assignment here, you'll see that there are downloads. You always wanna download these uh, uh, items and read them. And in this case, these are the instructions for the assignment. So here the instructions are that we want you to create an initial post that uh, answers any of the several of the following. So we have several questions here about things that you could talk about. Don't think that this is a Q&A that I want you to answer every one of these questions. These are things that you could talk about if you want. You only have to pick one topic. Uh, but what we want is for your internet, for your initial post. Um, and so here at the, in this completion box is a box that writes into the discussion board. If we move on to the actual discussion board, you'll see the same box at the top of the window. And you'll see that I've written something here with some questions. We've already got a couple of classmates that have started to put in responses. Your initial response, the response that you put in under your name should be thinking about what are some of the issues that you've uh, dealt with? Have you given a presentation before? Was it successful? Was it unsuccessful? If you had a bad time, tell us about it. Do you have a fear of speaking in public? If, you, if so, talk about that. Doesn't mean we're gonna let you get off the hook, but we want you to talk about your fears. Are you interested in learning different kinds of software? Are you interested in you know, learning beyond PowerPoint? You wanna use Prezi or Keynote or, or you want to be able to use um, uh, video software, Final Cut Pro. Uh, I like to make presentations with that because I'm very familiar with it. So there are a number of different tools that we can use, and we're going to talk about different tools. Uh, but talk about experiences. Talk about presentations that you've seen that have been very effective to you. But uh, any of these are just for giving us a post. Tell us what you'd like to learn out of this class, what you'd like to come out of this class with. If you're interested in making more uh, interesting slides, you know, you tell us that. Uh, so these instructions here, uh, the, the carrots you'll see are things you could talk about. You don't have to talk about them. But I want you to tell us in as many words as you can what your personal experience, what your personal history what presentation is about and what you're looking for and expecting. And we want you to try to do that by Wednesday night. So the initial post that each one of you needs to make needs to be done by Wednesday night. Now, uh, if you don't get it done, you can, you, uh, it, it's not like uh, there's a big penalty or anything. You can still post on Thursday or Friday. But what we want is for people to engage with each other. 
And once you've made your initial post, we want you to respond to other students. And if we if we didn't make you respond by midweek or make your initial post by midweek, then you might wait until Sunday night to, to do your post and no one would have a chance to respond to it. So we're simply trying to have an early uh, end date to this first post so that the responses can be more uh, fluid. And we want you to respond to at least two students. Now that's a low bar. I want to see a lot more activity in the discussion board. Uh, you know, I would like to see each of you responding to five or six students. That's the way you're going to get to know each other. And when you respond, I don't want you to just say nice post. I want you to talk about what they talked about. I want you to engage in discussion. I want you to elevate where that conversation is going. But this is a good way to get to know each other. It's a good way to express uh, your fears, your hopes for this class. And um, uh, we'll all kind of arrive at the same conclusions. So this is not a high level, um, or uh, uh, it's not going to take an awful lot of your time. I think that the initial post should be, you know, um, something that's at least a substantial paragraph. Uh, two paragraphs would be good. And then the responses themselves, uh, uh, you know, a couple sentences or more. Uh, the responses need to be done by Sunday night. The initial post needs to be done by Wednesday night. If you need more time than Wednesday, you can get it. So that's the discussion. It shouldn't take too much of your, your time. So the main project we're working on this week is called Professional Presentation Analysis. And then this is where we want you to watch a whole bunch of presentations and then talk to us about it. Right. This is a written assignment. No one's making a presentation this week. This assignment is a written assignment. You're going to write reviews in text. And so if we look at the instructions, what we want you to do is to go to the TED, uh, TED Talks website. If you've never heard of TED Talks, uh, TED stands for Technology, Education, and Design. And TED Talks are a series of uh, seminars that have been going on around the world for the last dozen years or more. And oftentimes when someone has a, uh, a seminar, they'll have a keynote speaker and that speaker will speak for, you know, 70, 75 minutes, an hour and a half or something like that. Well, TED Talks doesn't do that. They have short, fast presentations, just like all presentations should be. So instead of one main speaker, they'll have 20 or 30 speakers over two or three days. And each person isn't speaking any more than six to 20 minutes long. But they pack a lot of information into them. They make them very interesting. They are very well rehearsed, very well done. And every time they do uh, a new series, they add the videos to their website. So at this point, TED Talks website has over 3,300 presentations. It's an enormous reservoir of really interesting presentations for you to pick from. So I want you to dive deep in here. If you've seen TED Talks before, I really would prefer that you try to pick some TED Talks that you hadn't seen before. You know, maybe you're coming to this and you've seen a TED Talk and, and, and you already know which one you want to choose. Well, I'm not going to tell you you can't choose that one, but I really would prefer that, that you at least spend some time looking at more. This is a great chance to get lost down the rabbit hole. In terms of what your uh, uh, class time should be taken up doing, I'd be happy to see you spend seven or eight hours just watching TED Talks. Maybe take an opportunity to watch 20 or 30. They'll only make you smarter. Now you only have to pick three. So if you're that guy, is only going to watch three and, and write about three and you know, do the minimum, then you know I can't I can't turn you into something else. But if you're here for the full wholesale experience and you've never seen TED Talks before, please go crazy. Watch as many as you can and try to get as wide a variety. You can do search tools here. You're going to see lots of uh, uh, TED Talks about subjects you care about. Uh, video games, women in video games, uh, the future of movies. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, famous filmmakers. J.J. Abrams has a really terrific one 
called the Magic Box. So uh, filmmakers that you know are in here. There are famous people, but there are also people who aren't famous but are amazing. And so the only thing I can uh, do is implore you to just watch several of them. But once you've watched several, then the assignment is research, watch a minimum of three TED Talks and answer the question, what makes a presentation effective, creative, captivating, and or inspiring? So I want you to write a review of three of the TED Talks. Watch as many as you like. Please watch 10 or more. But pick three. Pick the three you want to talk about. And you don't have to like them all. If you find one that you don't like, that's often more interesting to write about. Because telling us what that you didn't like about it will give us your opinion. And I want your opinion. So the thing that's uh, slightly different here is once you've picked the TED Talk and you're writing a review, you're not writing a review of the TED Talk itself. You're writing a review of how well the presenter did his or her job. Now, you may need to tell me a little bit about the plot of the TED Talk in order to do your review. But your review is not how well did they talk about dinosaur eggs, but that in talking about dinosaur eggs, was the presenter engaging in one way or another. Now, in this case, I highly recommend that you get all of the reading from Nancy Duarte done, you know, the five chapters that we're assigning. We, we've assigned, uh, if I come back here and mention it, Why Resonate, Lessons from Myths and Movies, Get to Know the Hero, Define the Journey, Deliver Something They'll Always Remember. Within these five chapters, you're going to find the philosophy of Nancy Duarte, and you're going to find a full vocabulary of criteria for judging these TED Talks. So when I say I want you to review these TED Talks, the criteria through which you're going to judge them will come to you if you've done the reading. If you haven't done the reading, you might be at a loss for things to say. And if, you, if, the, if, if you're finding that's the case, go back and do the reading and then come back and do this assignment last. Because this assignment only makes sense if you get the reading done. And so we want you to write two or three paragraphs on each TED Talk, telling me how well the performer did his or her job. I want you to identify the performer by name. I want you to identify the TED Talk by name. And I want you to tell me how well they did their job. And here's some questions again. You don't have to answer these verbatim, but they are prompts for things that you can be talking about in your reviews. Why was this presentation powerful or moving? Why did you like this presentation? Was it the content alone or was it how the speaker delivered the content? What made the content appealing? What made it relatable? How did the speaker draw you in uh, to the subject? What, what tips and techniques did they use to, to get to the audience? What did you get out of the presentation that you would not have experienced reading an article about the topic? What kinds of emotions did the presenter elicit? We really want to focus in on how well did the presenter do his or her job. That's what I want to hear from you in these reviews. So you're choosing three TED Talks, you're writing two or three paragraphs on each one, and you're telling me this information. After you've done all three, at the end of that paper, and again, I'd like it to all be a single paper. You can turn them in as individual files if you like, but I prefer a single paper it has all collected together. And then at the end, after you've done the three separate reviews, conclude your assignment with your own list of 10 qualities, techniques, and or presentation skills that made the presentations you watched inspiring, captivating, creative, and effective. Wish there weren't so many verbs, adverbs in there. Um, anyway, I want a list of 10 things that these three videos shared. Your you're writing each individually about each one, and then at the end, you're giving me a list of 10 qualities about comparing the three together. And, uh, you know, if only two of the three share that quality, that's fine. You can, you can put that in there. But this list of 10 qualities should come directly out of the Nancy Duarte reading. After you've done the reading, you'll know exactly what we want in here. And the only other thing is, I skipped step two. I'm going to come back to it. Uh, create a document for this assignment and include supporting visual imagery. 
I want you to write a review. That's text. That's words on paper. Uh, you should do it in Word, Microsoft Word. Um, but I want you to add images. And I don't want you to add just any images. I want you to add images that help me understand what you have to say. So I want you to add relevant images. I'm going to judge you not on how many images you have, but whether the images help to communicate your piece. So if you were to read this as an article in a magazine, there would be illustrations. And those illustrations would help you understand what the text was saying. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to pick relevant images to put into your um, reviews that help understand. And uh, these can come from anywhere. You can do a Google search or whatnot. But for the most part, what you're going to do is, is probably take screen captures from the videos themselves. The videos you can watch directly on the TED website. And uh, these movies all play in line. And uh, I'm on a Mac. You guys wouldn't be on a different computer, but uh, on a Mac, it's very easy for me to make screen grabs. So if I'm playing the video and I just want to show what the performer looked like, I can make a screen capture very quickly. Boom. And uh, now I can... Um, Oh, well, uh, I don't know where it went, but anyway, that video, uh, that screen capture, uh, I can I can put directly into um, my write up. So uh, I have examples of what I'm looking at, of what I'm thinking about. So I want to show you some examples of some previous student uh, presentations that um, you can use if it helps you to understand what we're talking about here. So these were all done in Word. You do not have to use Word. You can use uh, any other writing tool you want. You can use Google Docs. You can use uh, uh, Apple Pages. Uh, you can use a Microsoft Publisher or Notes or OTF or whatever. Uh, we're giving you the new copy of Microsoft Office 365 as part of signing up and getting email here. And and because um, the the if you get the latest copy, that will give you the latest copy of PowerPoint and Word, and that will be very helpful in helping us uh, take you through the, the assignments this week, this month. So I we suggest that you download that. But here you can see. This uh, student has given me the name of the TED Talk, the name of the performer. I have a nice image here that tells me what the performer looks like. So he's chosen to illustrate it with a, a picture of the performer. Uh, that's helpful to me. I, I, I now know what that person looks like. There are other, thing, there are other kinds of ways to illustrate uh, presentation. You know, here this, this map image relates to uh, the nerd's guide. And here this musical notes page refers to Michael Tilson's uh, um, speech. So you can get your images from anywhere. You can do Google searches. If you're using images that are not yours, we want you to uh, acknowledge that. We don't have a, a heavy duty here of uh, citation. But if you take something off, if you did a screen capture or you, you, you pulled an image, off of the TED Talks website, just say the source of the image is TED Talks. If you took something from Google search, just say the source of the image is Google search. But um, that's all we're looking for. And remember at the end, we do want a list of 10 qualities and we want you to uh, talk about them. Now here, here are the 10 qualities listed here. One, humor. Two, visual aid. Three, telling a story. Four, playable demo. All of these things pretty much came out of Nancy Duarte reading. So don't just mention the quality, but tell us basically where it occurs or, or what you're referencing in the videos that you've chosen. So uh, I'm showing you examples with lots of images. People ask, is there a no minimum number of images? No, you could have a single image if that's all you want. Uh, more images 
doesn't necessarily give you a better grade, but every image that you pick needs to be relevant to what you're talking about. So if you've got 15 images and they all relate, then that's a good deal. If you've got 15 images and they're just cool pictures that don't mean anything, uh, that's not a good deal. So we want you to write, again, a two to three paragraph review of three different TED Talks. We want you to name the speaker, name the TED Talk, and then at the end, give me a list of 10 qualities that these TED Talks um, shared. Now, I am happy. I've got, a, I've got a, a great long list of terrific presentations that other students have previously done, and I'm happy to share them with all of you. But what I don't want to do is give you all the same examples, because here's the rule. Uh, if I give you an example, you cannot use the videos that are in that example. So for instance, if I share this talk to you, then Tim Urban's Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator is off limits for you. And so I don't want to share the same examples with everybody because it would be taking those movies offline for everybody. So what I'm going to do is anybody who sends me a note, if you, you can send me a text, you can write me on uh, the full cell platform. And if you don't know how to do that, uh, at the bottom of every single page, and in this case, we'd probably be talking about the, uh, the TED Talks page here, is a feedback box. And feedback goes directly to me. It's a message from you to me that no one else sees. So if you ever have a question about anything and you're on a particular page or a particular assignment, you can use the feedback box down there to send me a direct message. So uh, you can send me a message here saying, can I have some examples of, uh, you know, previous student papers, et cetera. And I will send you some examples that I'm not sending other people. And you're, you know, uh, I'm happy for you to have any examples, but then whenever I send you one, you just can't use those particular TED Talks. So with 3,300 TED Talks in play, I don't think that's uh, too much of a strain to ask. But uh, anybody who wants um, uh, a sample can. And uh, remember, you don't have to ask for it right away. You probably won't get started on the, on the uh, TED Talk assignment until later in the week. And that might be when it occurs you to ask, and that'll be fine. Um, I have been recording this, com uh, this presentation. So students that can't come live to these presentations are going to be able to watch a video. And you yourself, even though you've been here live, if you find that you need to refresh yourself, if I've talked too fast or you can't remember uh, you know, what I said about something or other, these videos, are, the, the recording of this presentation is going to be back online and they get stored right at the place where you signed up for the training in the first place. So down here where it says go to training recordings, uh, about an hour after we finish tonight, the video will be here and it'll be available for the rest of the week. And you can come back and reference that anytime you want. So uh, if there's some part of the TED Talks assignment that you forgot when you get around to doing it later on in the, in the week, you can just come back here and scroll right to the end and watch that part of the video over again. You don't, you don't have to watch the whole thing, but you can jump around in it. And uh, likewise, if you, if you don't ask me for a, a, a sample right away, you can easily ask me for a sample on Friday or Saturday uh, or Sunday to check what you're doing if you feel like uh, that will be helpful to you uh, to make sure you, you know you're, you're hitting the marks. Uh, and again, know that the examples that I'm giving you, sometimes people are intimidated because I give you great examples. Well, I'm not going to share you a, a crappy example. I want to get. I want to. I want to celebrate the great students, but know that full sale students go out of their way to make all their full sale students look bad. That's just the way you guys are. You're so creative. So I have some really long papers here. You do not have to write this much. I, what I what I've told everybody is two paragraphs per video times three, and a list of ten. 
So, uh, you know, if you're the kind of person that wants to write more, feel free. I, uh, I want you to express yourself fully, but don't be intimidated if the sample I give you is 15 pages long, you only have to turn in something that's two or three pages. Uh, so uh, be mindful of the instructions um, and so forth. Uh, a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Uh, you guys are coming to school here on a really fortuitous month. The month of March, uh, we're going to have a, a special event here next week called Hall of Fame. It's a time when Full Sail honors graduates who've gone out into the world and done really, really well. People who've earned Oscars and Grammys and other awards and so forth. And so we initiate them into what we call our Hall of Fame and give them awards. And we have all kinds of special meetings and uh, and 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 uh, uh, conferences and, and and talks going on at the school. And the online crew is not left out. A lot of these things will be streamed live. So I'll be talking to you more about that next Monday because it's happening all through the week next Monday. But know that next week there's going to be a lot of special events that you can be part of that are really fun here at Full Sail. And so you're coming to school here at a really fun time. Uh, does anybody have any questions? And I did want to mention um, right in point uh, where it matters, we have some links for you to in download the Office 365 software that comes free. Um, and the interesting thing about it is Microsoft is giving you a full, a full four-year license as a student. If you have a, a student email address, fullcell.edu, they're going to give you a four-year license to Office 365. And it, it lives online and a website that you can access. But also, you can download the the the, the uh, software and have it local on your machine, and it's available on Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. And a really nice thing that Microsoft does is it allow they allow you to have it on two of your devices at any given time. So if you have a a, a Windows laptop, uh, you can download it now and put it on there and have that for the next four months. And then when we give you the launch box. You can put it on the, the, the new launch box then. Uh, or if you have an Android phone or an iOS phone, you can go ahead and, and put that Office Suite on there. And um, you'll be able to have Microsoft Office Word and Microsoft PowerPoint on your phone. Now, uh, we're going to have to talk about some of the limitations of, of uh, PowerPoint for Android and, and iOS because there's not quite the same as the computer version, but there's a lot that you can do. And so it's it's a, a great thing that you can have and you can download it and install it for free. If you've got if you've had a previous version of Microsoft Office on the computer that you're running, you may need to talk to tech support because your old credentials will screw up if there's any previous install. But we can talk you through it. So call tech support. They will help you install like if you've if you've got an older computer and it's got an older version of Windows uh, Office on it, uh, and you like to have the new version, tech support will help you get rid of the old credentials and install the new copy for you. And believe me, that will be very helpful in doing this assignment. So again, uh, any questions? Uh, anybody have any questions? You can raise your hand for the uh, uh, to get the microphone, or you can type in the chat box. And I don't see anything. So I'm going to let you guys go. I know that uh, we covered a lot of material. But remember, it's all recorded, so you can come back and you're going to refresh yourself if you need to. Uh, welcome to the class. I'm glad you guys are here. And I think we're going to have fun this week. So uh, have a good week. Good night, everybody.